All right, so a day later, all the glue is dry, and I'm very happy about that. Everything is nice and solidly in place. As long as no super tension is applied here, you can definitely give these a good tug and a push, but generally speaking, they're not going to go anywhere. What I've just done is to, uh, oh, I don't think I had those on video last night, but basically I just finished off everything here, except the command console, which I've just spent the last uh, maybe 20, 30 minutes putting in all the 1 millimeter and 0.75 millimeter in there. There's five one millimeters and a couple dozen point seven five millimeters in there, but it's probably tough to tell. However, you flip this around to this side, and oh yeah. So out of that whole tangled mess, there's definitely about 30 fibers coming out of this one area alone. And one of the obvious difficulties that I am seeing now is that Fiber optics are susceptible to heat, which means any that are near any resistors, like that little guy right there, I gotta set up some kind of protection for those, move them far away from them, or something else just to keep the fibers protected, because I don't want those melting sometime. So right now, my next step is to uh, count out the 0.5 millimeters that are going in here, and it looks like about 75 holes. So that means just about 75 feet, well 13 inches each is what I'm measuring out, then it'll be a little more than 75 feet. But those are going in next, and then I think, I hope, that this huge tangle of mess, this huge apparent tangle of mess, actually it's not tangled at all, it just looks it, will start to sort itself out once I actually start threading all these into individual tubes. So once I get these fibers done up in front, that is pretty much everything for fiber optics on this deck completely. I'm very happy about that. It's a major step to have gotten done, and I am just about there. So next up is going to be coming over here, cleaning off this bench, and starting some work on some soldering. I've got, as mentioned, several of the Fedoratron all sequenzatory sequencers I'm looking at doing one of those slow one of them fast and if I have a third one on hand I'll go for a medium one talking with Elliot Brown this afternoon at Fedora Tron he suggested that even the pulsator that he sells which I have a number of on hand would also be good those use self blinking LEDs that he includes to drive any LED of any color that you have elsewhere so he gives you a yellow, green, and a red LED. You can use the combination of any one, two, or three of those and individually to drive blinking of other LEDs elsewhere. A nice little trick. I primarily envisioned using that on the little red emergency ball over by the computer wall because that has a lot of flickering random white uh, fiber optics that are giving me going off. But that should help out with the uh, freezer walls and the command console as well. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to do the sequencers first and then go from there. So uh, it's off to counting out some fiber optics, threading up. I don't know that there's really much more I can show you. It's just as I've shown you so far, heating up one end of the fiber optics with a little bit of a lamp to give it some bloom and then threading it through the hole. And then from there, I'll definitely cover organizing all this. Essentially what I'm going to have to do is take an LED and hold each one of these command console lights up to that to see which one is what. And then I can determine which one goes where. So I'm probably going to work with the steady colors first just because those are the obvious and easy ones to do. And there's uh, 25, 55, 105, 130... There's a good uh, 130 uh, individual point lights at the very least, and that's just the steady ones, never mind the blinkings of the slow or the fast or the randoms and so on. So, next up, uh, I'll either conclude with some more of this or we'll swap over here and get some soldering going on. Alright, alright, so, probably took about half an hour or so. See a few fibers are still sticking up, and that's because I haven't glued the back down, and that is because 
Oh yeah. Let me change the light around a little. I think you can call that a distinct mess. So, I'm going to take it methodically, pull them out one by one. Well, not pull them out, pull them out, but detangle them one by one. Drop a bunch of glue in the area as best I can, and then tape them off. Kind of like these here, so that I know what bundles are going where. So that should take a little while to do. Blobbing the glue into there with the uh, Elmer's glue tip is not necessarily going to be an easy thing, but it shouldn't be too, too bad at all. So uh, let me see how it goes, and I'll get back to you. Alright, so I think this is probably going to be the final note on this area for now. Basically, the fiber optics in this area was just so complex that I had to glue it in smaller sections. So I did this one panel first, let that dry for a day, did this one, let that set for a day. And just a few moments ago, I blobbed all the white glue in there, and now I'm using these clamps to keep the pressure on the fibers to keep them as tight as possible to the front. It looks good so far, and everything seems to be working. Now that these have all dried over here, I'm going to dump a lot more glue in there right now to be more assured of that. And that will pretty much end it for all the fiber optics on the ship entirely just about, I think. I'm sure there will be a little touch up here and there to do still. But for the most part, it's just plugging it into the LEDs. And speaking of the LEDs, let's switch over here. A while ago, and I actually lost the footage for this, I wired up the uh, pulsator from Fedoratron. This uses three self-blinking LEDs to drive a blinking on any other LED or LEDs that you choose. You can route the output from each of these three LEDs, or all of these three LEDs, and or all of these three LEDs, to any other group of LEDs you have. So these are going to be really good and useful in a lot of situations. Also, I'll be soldering up the Il Sequenzatore di Stefano, named after Elliot Brown's friend Stefano, who helped him out with the design of the board. I've got another pulsator here that I'm going to wire up just so we get that on camera. And uh, yeah, these are pretty much going to drive all the LEDs for the Jupiter 2 as far as I can tell. I have three sequencers right here, so what I'm probably going to do is one board will be a slow flash rate, another will be really fast, and then one will be medium in between. And I'll be using the pulsator, or two pulsators, to supplement that blink rate as well. I primarily see these guys being useful in a couple places, specifically the uh, two red flashers on the side of the red ball. And over on that wall, if you go over to the right and up a little, there's a yellow bar that goes all the way across. It's got a steadiness to it, but there's also some flashing going on. So combining all three LEDs which should give me the effect that I'm looking for on that. So with that, let's get to soldering. We'll power up, turn the fan on, and get going. <laughs> 